Chapter 25 While I had very little to do with anyone, through some past connections I met my eventual spouse. There was pressure to marry young in the church, and I did. Everyone was expected to follow the courtship rules, which included never being alone, and never touching so much as to hold hands until after the wedding. My fiancé and I broke the hand-holding rule once while on a chaperoned walk, and despite being in a large city, we were spotted by a church member who confronted me at the next service. When I said I was engaged, I was wryly given a pass by the member, as if it were our little secret. We married nine months after becoming interested in each other, and were both still in college. This was the ideal time to get married according to the church. Salvation was preached at our wedding and several non-church relatives were permanently offended. This happened at every UPCI wedding I went to. As my spouse and I grew into the church I had been attending, we continued to keep distance from everyone else. Later, we began to feel like God wanted us to be urban missionaries. We would work part or full-time in a large city, preaching on the streets, and trying to bring people to a church setting. We were particularly drawn to a nearby big city, because of its large atheist population. The atheist community seemed to be very logical and proof-oriented. Since I was much stronger with logic and analytical study than my peers, I thought I could use those skills to bring the gospel to the atheists. My spouse and I talked to the pastor about starting a work in the city, but he said we should not. Looking back, he probably had to say no to avoid being accused of poaching potential members, since there were other churches in the area. We obeyed for the time being, and were in some sense secretly relieved. Eventually, a story similar to the previous church started to play out. A preacher gained popularity, and was preaching things that were contrary to the pastor. No violence happened that we knew of, and when the preacher left to start his own church, half the congregation followed him. Since his preaching was less strict than the pastor's, there was an unspoken rule that the people who left shouldn't be associated with or even talked about. While I was enjoying my time at this church, the hour-long commute was tiring, and there was another church that could use our help. Next, we help a startup church and learn there are more than just a few bad apples in the UPCI.